Oh man, I can't wait to play this game. Oh, but my NES Classic's hooked up over there. I'll just go play it on that. And it's like, oh, all right. A big conversation that's going on uh, in the retro world right now, and I've seen like a lot of people talk about it. It smarted, started from a guy named Smash JT. I saw Radical Reggie do a video on it. Uh, Billy from the Game Chasers did it. Uh, is our retro video games useless? Is retro collecting useless? And when I first saw Smash JT's title, I kind of was like, eh, it's kind of like, I'll be honest, like a, like a cheap view type of video, but it wasn't. So Smash, Jeff, it totally wasn't. Uh, if you watched it, and heard him out, you really understood where he was coming from. Basically, he flew or went home to where he grew up and he found his old basement with all of his original video games, all of his original hardware. But then he also realized it took up a giant space, everything. And he was like, I can't justify myself flying all of these home, decorating my house, setting it up, when in reality, there's cheaper and easier ways, which is what we're basically gonna go into, is like emulation. I think that's what I put as the first topic as well, is yeah, is how do we feel because emulation, you can you can play all those games, and this is coming from two guys who collect video games like crazy. Yeah. The simplicity of emulation. Where do you find yourself as a collector, like now, where we're at in 2019 with collecting? Oh God, it's, honestly, this kind of like, it changes the game, put it that way. I find myself not wanting to buy like expensive stuff anymore. Like yeah. I'll I'll buy what I love. Like I have like a Metroid box on NES. Love it. River City Ransom box. Love it. But am I gonna get anything like a Samson or anything like that? Probably not. Even if I got one, I probably wouldn't keep it. What I want what I like to do is I like those the NES Mini. I want to yeah. add all the games on there. This is my over. This is what I want to do at the end. I want to get the NES Mini. I have. Er, sorry, I already have it. The NES Mini, Super Nintendo Mini, Sega Mini when it comes out, Turbo Graphics Mini, PlayStation and, Classic, PlayStation Classic. This is twenty dollars now. They dropped it again. Oh my gosh! Twenty yeah. bucks for a PlayStation Classic. Yeah. You have to pick one up. I think what you said. It, so emulation was always like a thing. I remember emulating in high school on my buddy David and Daniel. I'll call his house, in their house on a old junky computer that barely ran anything properly. But emulation now, it, it feels like it's come to the point, like you said, like the NES classics and, and companies kind of embracing that people want these these classic games in one thing. Yeah, there's been like homebrew channels and there's been, you know, like official Wii stores and different things where you can get them. But it's almost feeling like it's kind of, you don't feel as, you don't feel guilty doing it. Obviously there is yeah. the ways to do it, which is the guilty way which is literally a retro pie running all the arcade games behind me. <laughs> but it feels like it's more of a, a, like an okay thing to do when it's done by like by Nintendo and the classic consoles and yeah. the craze of classic consoles. Cause you love staring at that, the, just the nostalgia, even looking at the mini and the, the, the mini NES, the mini SNES, it gives me nostalgia, bro. I, I love looking at that. And knowing it's official. Yes. Knowing it's official has like a different, it's weird. It's funny how you could play the same NES game on a random emulation thing, like yeah. on a ROM site, and then play it on the NES Classic, and it just feels like, ah. Well, also you're looking at the controller, you're like, dude, this is just like my old controller. It even has the Nintendo, I hate collecting things like that don't have official, like, yeah, it doesn't feel as good. It doesn't feel as good. Unless you're purposely like, one of your like sub collector categories is like bootleg stuff, which yeah. I know some people will do stuff like that. Um, take up space. Uh, the inconvenience of it is I think the hardest thing for me to pull out retro consoles and stuff because I'm just like, I can and it does have a special feeling, but at the same time I'm like, the cords are short and I can never get it to look right on my TV and I've never been, this is another thing for me, I've never been like a tech guy to where I'm like, oh, if I hook up this wire and this cable and do it this way, you know, it'll be it'll be easier for me. I just like the quick like, I know Hyperkin makes those uh, cables that are very just like, you plug it in, it's not gonna upgrade it or anything like crazy, but it's just like, boom, to an HDMI, boom, and there you go, simple. That's as, as far as I can go. So I never <laughs> I never get like the full experience out of playing on original hardware. It, for me, playing on original hardware, it's like, like a, it takes me like, a, like, it has to be like a special night that I'm setting aside because it takes so long. And nowadays as we're older, we don't have, time these really days. Don't. 
I know. And if that thing freezes, because my Nintendo would freeze here and there, because yeah. I still use my original yeah. one yeah. from when I was a kid, and I'm yep. like, bro, I'll be playing Hammer <laughs> and Harry, and it freezes, and I'm like, no. No. <laughs> no, God, no! Yeah, I remember those. I remember my cat walking on top of Mega Man that was on on Dr. Wily. Oh. And I remember I was with my brother Nathan, and the cat walked on top, barely, didn't even jump, like, ding, ding, and it was like, boom. And I was like, <laughs> I had to kill the cat. Um, what did I say? Oh. So this is a big one and I think it's kind of interesting to ask again because I know it's been said a million times and we've all said it as retro gamers, it's like, you can't beat that original feeling. Like you can't beat that holding the original controller, the original console on a CRT. But fast forward, I mean, this is a touchy subject. Is that still true? Like in your brain, is it still true? Is that for you the ultimate way to play an NES game? Does that make you feel the most whole okay guilty pleasure for some weird reason i love playing my nest my original nest the original way and that's because of the whole little shaking with the cart and there's something about <laughs> doing that dumb little movement it i love it it's what i did as a kid dude i was great at it like all my friends would be like oh i'm like let me show you put the game in the You're short. still like that. I remember playing original hardware with you like months ago and you were like, hey man, let me take care of that. <laughs> I'm like, all right, dude, sorry. I'll, I'll step off. <laughs> but there's, see, it's not just about like, that just, that's really my childhood there too. Got it. It's like all those, I, I know it's like uh, glitches and stuff, but that's yeah. what was it, what it was about back then So to too. you, is that still the prime way to play? Take away the fact that like it might take a while to set up and you got to get out the right. If that's the way you could play, just the way you played as a kid, is that the way you'd choose to play? I would love to just play that way yeah. every time. Yeah. It's just the time it takes to do it yeah. is... Dude, it's insane. I'd say if you, if we were able to skip that process of like setting up and having the CRT and having everything hooked up right and without glitching, that to me is definitely the still prime way to play. Yes, I know, you know, emulation looks better yeah. technically, but you know, there's also, there's that charm to the the quality of the little, little glitchy and a little ugly, you know, but it's okay. Like when you see the pixels starting to go and you're like, <laughs> no, no, it's about to go. <laughs> That's one of the worst feelings. You just know when someone's playing, you see a glitch and their eyes are just like, no. But you know when you're playing with your friend and it's him playing and it's happening and you just start cracking up. You're like, yes. I'm oh, yeah. Get him. <laughs> Got him. All right, let's see if I have any other things. Um, okay, do we see other collectors kind of getting burnt out of the, the, the retro games being useless per se? Are retro gamers that we know starting to be like, eh, I'm kind of done with the retro game thing or there's... There's a couple. There's oddly enough, there's not as many as I would think yeah. would be. I've seen it only because like I'll see it like in my YouTube feed. Yeah. People who are doing those topics like like Smash JT kind of revamped that topic again, which has been talked about before, obviously, but it's like I feel like a lot of people are talking about it because maybe we're getting older and it's just harder to like find that time and again with all the classics out to really justify the space. Okay, here's a good question. Here's a great question. Do you think it's better for someone to sell their collection like, or, or get rid of some of their stuff to, to move it along to somebody else or the people that are like, no, I would never sell it, but then they just put it in like plastic totes in the shed. What's better to do? So, <laughs> oh, I know. So me, I do both. I, whatever I love, I keep and I put in that little tote, whatever. I mean, I, I lost my game room, so I, yeah. We, due to Riggy had like two kids, and I was like, he can still keep his game room. And then a third kid came, I'm like, he's not getting a game room, but maybe. <laughs> then he had a fourth kid, I was like, yep, well, might as well get rid of Ricky. But, that's okay. but look, when I do sell it, most of the time, it like, my my buddies all, yeah. Whenever I get something, for some reason, my buddies always like, hey, dibs on that when you get rid of him. <laughs> what the true? <laughs> what am I? Gabo on everything. Gabo. Oh, and, you want oh, to? Oh, dear too. It's do like, you want hey. to sell me that? <laughs> Yeah. Well, the funny thing is, Gabo ends up selling it back or giving it back. I'm like, oh, he's, he's, what was too the nice. point? he's too nice. He just gives it back half the time. Yeah. Oh, that was my last point. So I said that we kind of seem to like do both. Like, we're not fully against like emulation. We're not fully for it. We kind of sell stuff. We kind of yeah. sell buy stuff. We don't, we like, they're not fully, we don't think it's useless, but I don't know. We're kind of like a double edged sword when it comes to retro games being useless. Okay. So, like, 
when you're there, let's say you're at a convention, when you're there, all you want to do is buy everything. I know, and that's weird physical thing. copies, which is weird. Then you get home and you kind of like, dude, why? <laughs> yeah, you're like, oh man, I can't wait to play this game. Oh, but my NES Classic's hooked up over there. I'll just go play it on that. <laughs> it's like, oh, all right. But see, that's where nostalgia comes in and you're yeah. like, bought it. Yeah, overall, again, I think our final thought would be that we understand why people do get over it and can't do it. Yeah. And we're like right in the middle. We do both. We, we do sometimes feel like, hey, we can't keep this. There's no space for this. But I don't know. And that's why toys are honestly starting to become so much fun to collect. It's yeah, like, what are you going to do? Emulate a toy? <laughs> <laughs> well, virtual toy. Like, Yay, playing on a tablet. <laughs> this is a fun toy on a little mock model of something. I don't know. Yeah, they but could reissue them. They're not useless. Retro games aren't useless. No. Not useless is a strong word. There's a time and place for everything, but I wouldn't say they're useless hey, at all. If people start thinking they're useless and it drives the price down, I'm all for it. <laughs> useless it is. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>